peoples <laughs> upon this sabbath morning man how y'all doing this morning hopefully y'all good hopefully you're being blessed you know hopefully god is still showing you that he's with you hopefully he has his hands on you hopefully you know things are turning out better than expected you know it looks beautiful outside it's a beautiful day uh for you texan fans y'all gotta 
you know, y'all got to ride or die today. It's either you in or you out today. It's all kind of stuff. It's set up to be a very, very, very nice Sabbath. As long as we spend the time with the Lord and honoring it how he's telling us, we should honor it. I mean, um, this morning, we do have a word from the Lord. But, you know, before we get into all of that, y'all already know what it is. Y'all know what time it is this morning. We got to uh, get our building blocks out of the way. And once we get our building blocks out of the way, we got to go ahead and give to the Lord before we receive his word before we enter the inner court we're going to give to the lord like we normally do and then we're going to make it do what he do let the lord take over let him do what he does uh remember we do have we went and signed a lease on um our new building we went and signed a lease last week so we got it uh we're just waiting on our chairs they're gonna take a little bit once the chairs get here we good. I think uh, we get the keys this week sometime. This upcoming week, we get the keys for it. So we do have a building. We do have all of that. We get the keys. We're just waiting on our chairs. When the chairs get here, we can go on in. That's where we have a service from. Because the Lord has blessed us to do it. Turn it up for the Lord because it's worth it anyway. Let me go on ahead and uh, get this video up and running y'all because we're gonna get these building blocks out of the way like we normally do then after that i'll know what time it is offering tithing time all mean but vision and the mission gotta come first and here it is yeah! oh, let me turn it down hold on hold on hold on hold on, hold on, hold on. that's my fault right there let me turn it down some of y'all gonna say it's too loud and y'all can't hear me that's what y'all gonna be on. So let me turn it down. Here it is. Let's go. And it says, our vision is to see all believers of Christ obtain their salvation and inheritance promised to them by Yahweh, our Holy Father, which was paid for by his son, Yeshua the Christ. And our mission is to demonstrate the love of Christ to every nation by teaching the uncompromising true word of God to those willing to listen and receive. So if anybody asks y'all, hey man, what they standing on? What do they believe in that ministry over there? What they talk about over there? What they teach over there? I'm teaching this. This is what we stand on. This is what we believe. This is the vision that the Lord gave us for this ministry, all man. So now you got a way to, to let them know what it is. Let them know. That's what we are. And if you ain't on it, something might be wrong with you. But anyway, if you don't want the uncompromising truth, something is wrong with you. But anyway, uh, yeah. Now that we done got that out of the way, we have all of that out. We're going to say the truth hurts. Anyway, man. Anyway, hopefully them Texans the truth later and they win. <laughs> hopefully. You know, I'm actually pulling for them. I want them to win. Anyway, yeah. Now it's time to do our uh, tithing and offering. You know, for us to offer our tithing <laughs> unto the Lord. I mean, so let me go ahead and get this going. Y'all know what it is. If you're doing it by phone, doing it by check, doing it by cash, yeah, we got ways to do that. But if you're doing it by cash, by check, by phone, cash app, uh, all of, however you're doing it, you need to get that means out. Stand up. And we're going to wave it before the Lord like a wave offering. We're going to wave it before the Lord. The Bible speaks about wave offerings. We're going to wave it. And while we're doing all of that, we're going to say this sowing proclamation. Get it in your spirit. Deep down. Deep down in your soul. See, the Houston was trying to come out. So I'm going to say it the Houston way one time. Get it deep down in your soul. You know what I'm talking about? Get it deep down in there, man. And while you're speaking this, you should feel it in your spirit because it's going to start to manifest. Ooh, excuse me, y'all. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I was trying to mute myself. Didn't get a chance to do it. But tie them off. And if you're standing, let's go on and get it. It says this. Being obedient to God's will 
I sow into my future, a future of peace, a future of love, and a future of prosperity. I gladly give back to God so that he can gladly give me my rightful inheritance. You need to know how to do it. This is how you donate to our ministry. This is how you get tired or offer to our ministry, whatever you want to call it. That's how you do it. But we stand on our beliefs in the Lord, and we believe that he will keep us first. And make sure we always take care of as long as we're honoring what he said to do in the Bible, and that's give back to him what is his. Give unto Caesar what's Caesar's, but that ain't the Lord's. Give unto him what is due to him. So we're going to give unto him what's due to him. And he said, oh, if you do that for him, he'll... Stop the canker worm from coming and devouring and tearing stuff up. He'll have hedges around you. He'll bless you. Have you doing all types of things. God is not a man that he should lie. So why should we not believe he's going to do these things if we do what he's asking us to do? Or do we really not have faith? But that's a totally different uh, thing that we're going on right there. So right now, we should be good, all man. Should be good. So with all of that being said, we're going to go ahead and jump into this word. But for some reason, before we get into this word, yeah, we're about to throw off our regularly scheduled program because I just heard it. Mrs. Mitchell, I need you to open us up with prayer. All right. Dear God, we come to you this morning first thanking you for allowing us to see this first Sabbath day of 2024, oh God. We thank you for the, your many blessings that you bestowed upon us, and we ask that you continually increase your spirit within us, oh God. We thank you for <clears throat> just the revelation and the word that you're going to bring to us today, God. Let us have open ears, open minds, receptive spirits to what your word is going to do, what it, your word will say, and the power that will come from it, from your spirit, oh God. God, we thank you for your man of God, that he listens to you and allow your spirit to run. It's not even Um, uh, you were in the middle of praying because it just kind of went out. What happened? I don't know. I finished. Oh, okay. All right. Well, you opened us up. That's what we needed. You good. So now she opened us up in prayer. Just heard the Lord. Y'all got to open up in prayer. And, um, the word that he gave me for this morning, it's not a particularly kind one. I'm going to say it that way. Uh, when my alarm went off and I got up and had one eye open and one eye closed and I can barely see like I normally do, or I could even uh, clear my throat. <laughs> Like I always do every Sabbath morning. Lord, what do you want me to tell the people? A lot of times he waits. I got to wait till you get all the way up so you can hear me clearly. Sometimes he, I'm going to see if you just going to make something up and go out there. <laughs> and I'm waiting. Then sometimes he answers directly very quickly. This was one of those mornings. So if we were looking for a real happy word to start out the year with, since this is the first Sabbath of the year, this is not that Sabbath. This one here is, I'm going to tell you now, if you're watching at home, if you're a part of this ministry, this is a clear warning that with some of us, the Lord, is not happy with some I'm gonna just say it like that. With some of us he's not happy because right when I said 
What do you want me to talk to them about today, Lord? He said it loud, clear as day, and that is what woke me up. Now I'm waiting to get up. I've been up moving around. That is what woke me up. He gave me them scriptures, boom, 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 fast. So this is for some people in our ministry. I'm not going to sit here and hold back and lie. Wait, we Like we just said, vision and mission. The uncompromising true word of God, that's what we're going to do. So some people might feel I'm attacking them. Just know, I don't know all y'all business like that. You know what I mean? I don't. The Lord is saying certain stuff, and he's meaning it to go to certain people. So it's going to hit who it hits. And if you're at home and you're watching and you happen to be tuning in, it's for some of y'all too. But we need to thank him that he's actually warning us before he just starts to, you know what? I'm tired. And we know when he gets tired, stuff gets to happen. We don't want that to happen at all. So, without further ado, we're about to get into this word. And I would like you first to turn to Ephesians 4, 1 through 7. Ephesians 4, and we're going to read 1 through 7. Let me know where y'all at. Turn it up for the Lord, because it's worthy. And I like this one. All right, we there. And it says like this. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness, that equals humility, and meekness, that's gentleness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. That's long suffering is patience. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body. Just one, not many. One body. And one, capital S, spirit. Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One hope of your calling. We all have a calling. He's talking about you got one chance to get that right. One. One Lord. One faith. It's not a bunch of different faiths. It's not many ways to get to God. Just one. One baptism. He didn't say you got to keep getting baptized over and over every time you fall away from the Lord and then come back. Just one. One God. Hmm. And Father of all, who is above all and through all, and in you all, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So each one of us have a certain amount of grace. It's not a one size fits all. Y'all might have more grace than me. Don't know. I may have more grace than some of you. We don't know. It could be a person that's not even going to a ministry at all or interested in the word of the Lord at all. They may have more grace than all of us. We don't know. But it's telling you Christ right here has measured out every person's amount of grace that they're going to get. So when the grace runs out, what happens to you? What he's saying right here, man, hey, 
when he died, for us to be able to get there, for us to have a chance, he also measured out how much grace each one of us is going to get. Now, how many of us want to keep testing that grace? Because you don't know when your last time of grace will be. So why keep testing it? Right? But even in all of that, the key was in the first verse, what he wants us to get out of here. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord. Somebody what he just said, prisoner of the Lord. When we chose to walk with the Lord, we became prisoners of the Lord. We're supposed to be doing the Lord's work, right? But how do we all become prisoners of the Lord's word? How do we become prisoners to the Lord? We agreed to do the Lord's work. We agreed to say we want to partake in the kingdom of heaven. We agreed to say we want all the things that God has for us. We agreed to do some things and to receive the blessings that he has for us, right? So that means we're indebted to him for him giving us life for him taking care of us, for him doing some things. We are indebted to him. So since we owe him, we are the prisoners of the Lord. Different from being a prisoner of the world where they throw you in jail <laughs> and feed you terrible stuff and you got to drink out of faucet at the top of the toilet. You got to do all It's different, right? No, we, we ain't talking about that type of prison. So we in this ministry, by being here, and you should be in any ministry that's actually teaching you the word of God, you are all prisoners to the Lord. Unless you just say, it ain't no Lord, I don't believe, or I'm turning away, I don't really care. If that's not it, you should be a prisoner of the Lord, and you should be happy to be a prisoner of the Lord. Because he's going to make sure you're seen out there and that you're kept. But he wants us to know this morning a bunch of y'all testing him. And he's tired of you testing him. Each one of us has a certain measure that Christ has already measured out. Some of us are close to that threshold. I think I told y'all last week and about three weeks before that, the Lord showed me something and it wasn't good. If you go back and listen, you'll hear me say it like twice. He showed me some stuff, and it wasn't good. Now he's giving me this. This is a clear warning to whoever. Let's not be doing the selective hearing stuff that people will do. Well, I ain't hear that. I heard this. No, nah, hear everything. Because he wants you to hear everything. So now we up out of Ephesians. Let's go to Luke. Luke 9. And we're going to read 57 through Luke 10 and 3. So Luke 9 and 57 is where we start. Let me know when y'all are there. Oh, we got one there. Cool, cool. All right. And again, again, like I said, I am not attacking anybody this morning. When the Lord wake you up and tell you, talk about this, these the scriptures, you do it. <laughs> so I'm doing it. All right, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Boom, we there. And it says this, and it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. 
And he said unto another, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury their dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. We're going to stop right there. Now, this is a person. Think of you in the place of this person, right? You come up to the Lord. Hey, Lord, I'm ready. I'm going to follow you wherever you go. So the Lord, like, hey, man, all right, cool. You're going to follow me. Bet. Listen to this right here. Birds in the air, they have nests to lay in. Foxes got holes. They go in. They go to sleep. All of that right there. But I don't have a place to sleep. I don't have a home. So just know that. All right, Lord. Okay, now, since you know that, follow me. We're going to do this right here. What he did was told that man up front, all them conveniences that you have, I don't have it. Now do you still want to follow me? Because you came to me saying, you ready. You finna follow me wherever I go. I'm letting you know that I know you a person that want to do this when it's convenient. I don't have all of that. Okay, now follow me. What did the person do? Right when he found out them conveniences was gone, I ain't going to be able to just go home and lay my head on a warm pillow. I ain't going to be able to lay in my bed. I ain't going to be able to eat when I want. I ain't going to be able to just get that bucket of water whenever I want. I ain't going to be able to do none of that, change clothes, live like I want. I'm not going to have nothing. I'm not going to be able to do all this type of stuff that I want to do. Now it's in his mind, it's hitting him. I got to change my life. I actually got to change what I'm, what I'm doing. When it hit him, now the Lord, yeah, follow me. Now follow me. First thing dude did, uh, I got to go bury my dead father. Wait a minute. What was that? You just came to me saying I'm ready. I'm going to follow you wherever you want to go. But right when I tell you them conveniences you got to go on, now all of a sudden you got a dead father you got to go bury. Now some excuses getting made, right? You're backing on up out of there. You're backtracking on what you said. Hmm. So, hey, let the dead bury their dead. That place where your dad was, he may be dead, but it's a bunch of them dead there. A lot of them ain't going. He's telling them right now, a lot of them ain't going. Them dead people. Let them bury your dead father. They weren't going no way. You said you wanted to walk, right? Yeah, okay. Now you want to go bury your dead daddy. What you should be trying to do is go spread the word of the kingdom. Gotcha. So now we pick back up 61. And another... So another person, also, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at my home, at my house. So now the first, the, the second person, he, all right, Lord, well, look, I ain't like him that's trying to backtrack everything. I'm ready to go. But first, let me go let everybody know I'm finna be gone. Then I can come back. You just saying, I'm not like the first dude. That's him. Let me just let everybody know I'm about to be gone. What does God say? And Jesus said unto him, well, Jesus, I'm sorry. What did Yeshua say? And Jesus said unto him, no man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Look at what you just did. I'm ready to go. You're putting your hand on the plow. Then you take it right back off. Well, hold on. Before I start, let me go to all the people of my past and tell them 
I ain't going to be able to just chill with y'all no more because, you know, I'm about to start doing the work of the Lord now. I ain't going to be able to just sit down and do all the stuff we used to do because I'm doing the work of the Lord now. I ain't going to be able to just come over or have y'all come over or do all of that because, you know, hey, I'm doing the work of the Lord now. So you got to know what's up with all of that. Yeah, matter of fact, oh, so Big Mama them are they at home, huh? All right, well, yeah, because now it's you trying to let everybody know I can't do this stuff no more because I'm in service of the Lord. So I'm about to go to my past and hey, I'm out the game, y'all. I'm out the game. I'm all, you know, I'm about to serve the Lord now. I'm about to be doing this. I'm about to be doing that. So yeah, you know, your boy, I'm about to be doing a holy roller thing. And everybody, oh man, some people about to get drawn right back in. Talking to the past, you're supposed to be trying to leave. Good morning, Pastor Charlotte. What's happening with you, man? But yeah. Some of you going to get drawn back in. Your family got too much of a hold on you. You ignore what the Lord is saying when you get around your family. And this is exactly who he's trying to say. I need to go let them know that I'm about to serve the Lord. God didn't tell you to let your family know you're about to serve the Lord. What, they, what bearing do they have over if you serve the Lord or not, right? What bearing does anything in your past have over if you fit to serve the Lord or not? It has none. So why do you have to go confer and check with them and make sure it's good with them for you to do what the Lord is calling you to do? That makes no sense. So you can't come to me, hey, I'm ready to serve. You put your hand on the plow. Well, hold on, before I start, let me go let everybody know I'm I'm finna be gone. I ain't gonna I can't be doing that no more. I can't be drinking no more. I can't be well drinking. It don't say nothing about that. But I can't be getting drunk no more. I can't be hitting the club no more. I ain't going over here no more. I ain't finna be at these certain type of spots no more. I can't chill with y'all no more because you know y'all kind of what you checking it with them for? You ready to roll with the Lord? Let's roll. Leave all that behind. Remember what he did with the apostles. He got on the boat with Peter. Hey, I need you to follow me. What Peter do? He didn't. Well, let me go tell my boys, man. Uh, I ain't gonna be here doing this no more. You know, I got some folks in the village that you know they love me. So you know, let me run this by them, and you know, just have one last drink with them. You know, uh, you know, just let me let me see the boys real quick. Let us hit the strip club. One more time, you know what I'm saying, for old times' sake, because I ain't going to be doing it more. They, they, mean, they ain't do none of that. He said they dropped what they did right then. All right, I'm following the Lord. Ever since then, he had them. They was good. So this person here, he telling you, you ain't fit. You say you want to serve, you put your hand on the plow, but then you turn around. Let me go tell my family and all them I'm finna be doing this. What, what you got to tell them for Right now, they don't even matter. That's crazy to hear. Some of us don't want to hear that. Right now, your family don't even matter. Because it ain't like your family can get you in heaven or get you out of it. Your family can't put you in hell or get you out of it. So what you worried about them for? What you worried about the people in the past for? What are you worried about all that? You should be worried about the one that vouches for your soul and how you just told him I'm finna start doing what you telling me to do Lord or you just came to him and said I'm ready to do what you telling me to do Lord and not trying to turn back and worry about what they gonna say so now we going we in Luke 10 now Luke 10 and 1 because we're going to keep going to Luke 10 and 3 I think yeah after these things the Lord appointed other uh other 70 also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. Listen to what he did. Listen to what he did. The first two that came to him with that, they got dismissed. Oh, so y'all BS. Bet. Got you. 
I'm going to appoint other people. What did it tell you? He got other people to do what you should have been doing. Some of us, God need me. God ain't going to have nobody take my place. I'm unique. Only I could do what I could do. You are a unique person. Ain't nobody made just like you. But you ain't the only one that could do what you could do. It's others that could take your place. And if they take your place, you're going to know when the Lord fired you. Blessings seemingly going to stop. Stuff going to start getting held up. You may feel like I can't move no more, kind of like I'm stuck. The spirit leave you, you might not feel like the Lord with you. Kind of, I'm, I'm just here. You'll know when God fired. Those other two got fired. He said he put other people to do what they were supposed to. I got others. They going to do it. God don't need you. But you better believe you need God. And if you ain't going to do what you're supposed to be doing, he will get somebody to take your place just like he did with them. Boom. I got some other people taking your place. I appointed them. They ain't come with no excuses. They ain't come with none of that. Well, I can't serve because, oh, I got to actually change my life. Talking about it sound real good. You actually got to go do it. We can talk about changing our life all we want. One day, I'm going to be this type of person. I'm going to be that type of woman. I'm going to be this type of dude. I'm going to have this, and I'm going to be riding around in this, and I'm going to live like this, and I'm going to have this kind of job, and then I'm going to be putting on real nice suits when I go to church. I'm going to do all this. One day is coming. Well, when are you going to make that one day happen? The Lord telling you, you can do that right now. But you trying to, oh, I actually got to change my life to make it happen. I wouldn't, I'm, yeah, I was just talking about it, but I ain't say I was just going to change everything. Yeah, now we walking back what we're saying. We're going to get into that a little bit later. But we're going to go to verse 2. Because like now it says that he put other people in their place, other people that actually wanted to serve for real, they wanted to change their life for real. Y'all go, I'm about to hit this spot, this spot, this spot, and this spot. I need two of y'all to go there, warm the people up before I get there, right? He sent them out. But also, listen to what he tell them. Therefore said he unto them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Listen to what he just said. The harvest is great, but the people willing to do the work, but ain't nothing but a few of them. This scripture's all in here talking about the Lord don't like people that just do lip service. If you're down with me, you're down with me. You're going to live like it, right? You see the rules. You're going to live by them. You see what you're supposed to be doing. You're going to live by them. I don't like people just telling me stuff. It actually has scriptures talking about lip service. Matter of fact, Mrs. Mitchell, you can find one and type it in on the side up here. I'll read it real fast. But he talks about that, right? Now he's telling these people, the harvest is great. We got folks that want to come to the Lord. But we don't have people willing to do the work. We don't have people willing to change their lives. Like you have to when it comes into serving the Lord. We don't have people willing to actually go out and tell the unadulterated true word of God. We don't have that many people willing to do it. And that's sad. A lot of us talk about it, but won't actually do it. And Jesus is telling you, I see it. I'm calling it out right now. It ain't that many people that's actually going to do it. Pray ye for or pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. So pray to God that we get some more people to come in and help. That's you at home. That's you in this ministry. That's us, true believer. They're praying for us to come help. They're praying for us to help. Change our lives. Why? Because it's going to be somebody else looking at us change our life, and then they want to change theirs. They're looking at us to actually give them the unadulterated true word of God. Whoever you are at home, whoever you are in this ministry, that's what we're supposed to be about. We said that's what our building blocks are at this ministry. That's our vision. That's our mission. We got to stand on that. 
Why? Because people are looking at us. Right? They want us to do this type of stuff. They need us. The Lord is asking us, pray for more. Now, if we ain't going to do it, what you think he's going to do? Just like he did in the other one. You get somebody else to do it. Y'all ain't who you're supposed to be. I'm going to get somebody else. I think it's Isaiah 29 to 13. Wherefore the Lord said, for as much as this, people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me. What I'm telling you, lip serving. With their lips, they telling you they my people. With their lips, they telling you they honor me, right? But have removed their heart far from me. And the fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. The respect of the Lord is taught by how you say you should respect other men. That don't have nothing to do with me. That's exactly what he's talking about. Look, with your lips you're saying all of this, but your heart ain't in it at all. Your life ain't honoring me. Just your lips are. And that's not how I want to be honored. You honor me with how you live. You honor me following these rules, laws, statutes, and commandments I put out there. You honor me by honoring the stuff I told you to honor, how I told you to honor it. Right? We say a whole lot and think we're getting somewhere. And that's when we get there. Depart from me. You work of iniquity. I never knew you. I said 1 John 3 and 18. You can pull it up. But like he's saying right there in 2, it ain't that many people willing to do the work. 3, go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. So the actions speak light than the word. Exactly. Actions speak louder than the word. That's right. But what did he just say? I'm sending you forth. Y'all lambs. You finna be amongst the wolves. But you gotta know, I'm a lamb of God. I'm a lamb of Christ. That's who I'm following. I can't be a wolf. Some of us get around the wolves, and so we don't get ate up. <laughs> I know that sounds country. That's terrible English. So we don't get ate up. We'll start, we become the wolf. Or we'll start to act just like the wolf. Right? So that way I don't get any, I, I'm not prey. I don't want to be prey. We're supposed to be vulnerable. That's what Christ was. He got out here. He could have been the lion. Remember, he's the lion and the lamb. The lion of Judah and the lamb at the same time. He could have been the lion. And everybody that did something wrong, said one thing, uttered one thing, even thought something wrong, could have just messed them up, rearranged their whole anatomy, changed the whole matter. <laughs> Adam's about to sit. He could have changed all of that. But no, I got to be vulnerable. I got to be the lamb. Because whatever somebody does something to a lamb, it's going to be charged to them. That lamb did nothing to you. How are you going to explain talking bad about this lamb when you get in front of the Lord? How are you going to explain treating this lamb bad when you get in front of the Lord? Did the lamb come to you with the message from the lamb? Yeah. Okay, so how can you justify doing or saying or treat them how you did? Your actions are going to be a testimony against you, but we have to be willing to be lamb. We're going to go out amongst some people that we, hey, these folks is that. We can't be scared to say the message of God. That's why we don't need to be checking up with people because some of them, well, you know, I kind of, but, you know, the church thing is, you know, you, you know, huh? No, right now you already ready, willing to compromise because you're trying to impress a wolf. You ain't a wolf. You're not a wolf. What are we trying to impress them for? Like he's telling you, I'm sending you among the wolves. Know who you around. Wolves prey on lambs. I did that for a reason. They prey on you. Now, when you can convert a wolf to being a lamb, hey, man, you something else. Now you actually using the power of Christ. You turn a wolf, change his whole nature, and now he following the Lord just like a lamb. That's what we're supposed to be trying to do, convert people. 
But if we won't change who we are, and if we won't change our lives, and if we're not going to follow these laws, statutes, and commandments that he's placed before, then we can't do our purpose. So this morning, we see that. He's telling some of y'all put your hand to the plow and you trying to turn back. Some of y'all seeing this ain't going to be as convenient as you like. And now you're trying to walk back some stuff that you said at some point to him. He don't forget nothing. He knows everything that you said. He about to show it to us in scripture. And some of y'all trying to walk it back and he ain't taking that. Like you said in the nineties, and I ain't having. That's what he. I ain't having. So now let's go. We're gonna stay in Luke. Luke seventeen. We're gonna read twenty six to thirty three. Luke seventeen. Twenty six. Through thirty three. Let me know where y'all at. You're right, Pastor Charlo. We can't be ashamed to serve the Lord, man. We either going to do it or we ain't. We worried about how folks are looking at us, what our family think about us, what old people in the past think about. We done already messed up. Four theirs. Boom. Five. It says, and as it was in the days of Noah, remember this is the Lord speaking all this in red, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. Hmm. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage. Until that day Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. I'm going to pause right there. Look at what he said. It's just like in the days of Noah. You had people living life. We out here living life, living good. We eating. Oh, it's got bread. We got cattle. We eating out here. It was talking about people was getting married. They was living. Dudes getting married. It was like women being given away in marriage. Everything is good. Yeah. But what also was going on in the day of Noah? Noah's actually warning everybody. Hey, man. It's been a flood. Y'all come get on this big giant boat I'm building. You can make it. <laughs> What's the people saying? Hey. That man crazy. He crazy as hell. It ain't rained in years. What was it? Something like, I'm not sure what the year. It was like 40 years or something. It ain't raining like 40 years. You're talking about it's finna rain. That man crazy. Y'all see him out there building a big giant boat by himself? Him and his foot. Yeah, they crazy. Anyway, back to the drink. What's happening? Pedro, let's get the mariachi music playing. They're doing all kind of stuff. Come in, they got it playing. They got quinceañeras going on. People being given away in marriage. It's all kind of stuff happening, right? Everything good. We eating. We living life. We got money. People getting married. These are good times. And all of these good times, and you living how you living, the Lord been warning you this whole time. This is all for the end. Because all of y'all out here, sinning and not doing what the Lord has told you to do. So while you thinking everything nice and sweet, God actually finna kill everybody here. I'm sending somebody to let you know all y'all getting ready to die because y'all ain't living right. What did it say? Why was the flood coming? Because great sin was on earth. It was so much sin. God, was, oh no. Oh, no, we starting this all over. So while you convenient, living life, we living good. Look at us. We balling. People getting married. We blessed. We coming up with all them sayings. Highly blessed. No stress. We got this. We 
you know, naming and claiming. We coming up with all the cool sayings. We living good. You got people, hey, look at my fine French Lee robes. I got these new purple ones. It's going down. You know what I'm saying? It was not rain upon the earth before the flood. That's what I'm talking about. It ain't rain. Okay, cool. Look. It's finna rain. Everybody finna die. Get on this boat. I sent y'all a warning. Y'all looked at the messenger like they was crazy. And what did it say? Everybody was doing all that. Everybody was happy. Until the day Noah got on that boat. It said just like that. Until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. You had somebody warning you the whole time. Hey, what y'all doing? Ain't right before the Lord. How y'all living? Ain't right before the Lord. We all made promises that we're going to follow the Lord's word. We all made promises that we're going to do this here, and ain't none of us keeping them. The messenger was sent to tell y'all that. Y'all looked at the messenger like he lost his mind. The day your grace ran out is the day that messenger got on the boat. When the door closed, your time was up. Wasn't no more time. Wasn't no, well, Lord, let me try again. Let me get this right. Well, Lord, ain't know it was going to happen. Oh, I sent somebody to tell you it was going to happen. You heard it. You've been hearing it for all these years. I forgot how long it took him to build a boat. But you've been hearing it for all these years while he was building a boat. You even seen him getting animals in there, right? Yeah, you seen it. You had your chance. I ain't trying to hear all that. Time for talk is done. Now that you see you're going to die, now you want to, oh, no, it's too late. If you was really about it, if you was really a person of God like you said you were, you would have been on the boat with the messenger of God. But you being a lamb among wolves chose to chill with the wolves. And while you're chilling with the wolves, you're about to die with them. Your grace ran out when that ark door closed. Even more reason why they looked at Noah crazy, they was like rain. Even today, everyone has heard and know that Jesus is coming back and some people are not preparing. It'll be too late. It's going to be way too late. He telling some of us, I'm talking with this message right here, he telling some of us that our door's going to close on you. I've been trying to tell you this whole time. I've been warning you this whole time. The ark door getting ready to close on some of y'all. Let's keep it going on. Because he says again, look, likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot. Look at this. It's like a lot. We already know where that's going. Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Bet. In the days of Lot, they did eat. They drank. They bought. They sold. They planted. They built it. Look, hey, man. Same thing with them. Them boys out here, they balling. They buying stuff. They selling stuff. We got money. Look how we living. Look at this here. We able to build homes. We building all of this here. We able to plant. We got harvest coming in. We balling out here. They all living in sin, though. Some of them like, hey, I ain't sending like them over there. But God telling you to do something, and you kind of, well, I don't know about all that. Everybody here ain't doing that. You know, they're going to look at me kind of crazy if I get to doing that. You know, that type of stuff. Yeah, you know, that ain't kind of player, Lord. For us to be doing that, that ain't kind of player. For us to be, you know, you trying to have us talk. Yeah, they're going to, nah, we, we good. We good. We, as long as we ain't doing all that over there, we good. That's what a bunch of us is thinking now. Well, we ain't doing that no more. We ain't doing this no more. So we good. And God looking like, no, you ain't. Good in country, just like that. No, you ain't. No, you're not. You're not doing good. Because I'm telling you, to do some things and you're not doing. I've told you to live a certain way, to honor me in certain occasions. We've taught it. We've gone over it. You've read it. We've all looked at it. And at some point in time, we done all said, we standing on what God is saying. All right, cool. So why ain't we doing it now? 
And some of us, for time gone by, I honored it a little bit here, so I should be good. Okay, cool. I got you. You want to play games. You think what I said served me a certain kind of way. Well, I did it for a little bit, so you should be straight, huh? Kind of like when Kanye West said, I made Jesus walk, so I'm never going to hell. See, I made a song about the Lord, so I'm good. I'm covered. You know, I can dibble and dabble and go off into all kind of stuff. But, hey, I made a song about the Lord, so I'm always going to be good. That was some of us. See, I served the Lord real good right around through here. So I should be straight. I done bought some leeway. All right. That's what you think. That's what you think. That's what this message is for today. That's what you think. And like he said, they thought that too. They thought they was good because they were prosperous. We get money. They can go buy stuff. They could do stuff that they hadn't been able to do before. Right? Y'all building buildings. You're buying this. You're buying that. You got harvest coming in. Y'all getting married. You're eating real good. You're drinking real good. All of that. But the whole time, all y'all getting ready to die. What did he do with Sodom and Gomorrah? He sent a messenger there too. Wait a minute. You see the you see the comparison? Everybody was feeling good too. I sent Noah. Hey man, everybody finna die. Come get on the boat. That fool crazy. Same thing again. Hey, we all living good. He sent the messenger. Everybody finna die. But what did it say this time? They took offense with the messenger. Matter of fact, we trying to we finna try to force, listen to that, force how we live on the messenger. Y'all done really stepped out of line. The messenger coming to tell y'all, y'all all finna die. Not only do you not receive the message, like a bunch of us, I, I rebuke that. I rebuke that because it don't sound like we want it to sound. But if God say what he said, it don't matter whether you're trying to rebuke it or not. You ain't God. You can't rebuke God. You can't rebuke God. God, I rebuke that. I don't want to hear what you said with that because that doesn't sound like I want it to, uh, to sound. And God wouldn't do that. The God I know wouldn't do that. Or like we be doing, my God wouldn't do that. Man, please. All of that stuff be sounding terrible. Like we be... We, we been trying to say it to try to sound like we smart. My God, oh, it's your God. Cool. So if you're not serving your God, like it tells you to do in here, is that your God? No. We just went over that the other day. God said his set apart, do exactly what he tells them to do right here. So if we're not doing exactly what he's telling them to do, that's not your God. Hmm. But we'll do that. My God wouldn't do that. I'm rebuking that. It don't sound all right. They did that with that messenger, right? Matter of fact, we finna force how we live on you. How did that end? We finna go into it. 29. But the same day the light went out from Sodom. <laughs> Who is your God? Note the little G. Yep. Wolves and sheep clothes. Now, when all that happened, the messenger came, he told you this, he told you that. Y'all tried to force y'all away on him, all the other type of stuff, right? What did God do? Who the righteous people here? Lot's family. All right, cool. They're the only ones righteous. Lot, get up out of there. You and your family, get up out of there because, oh, yeah, I'm going to burn all this up. Everybody here dying. I'm burning it all up. Leave. Don't look back, though. You're going to hear all kind of screams. You're going to hear all kind of stuff. Don't look back. Why? What you looking at your past for? Hold on. Don't this sound kind of familiar? What the other two people that came to the Lord was trying to do? Go back to their past for whatever reason. Looking back. It was good when we was able to do this. I, I can't. No. Lot. Get up out of there. Don't look back because it ain't got it's nothing for you back there. All that stuff back there is what caused them to get killed. All that stuff back there 
wasn't righteous. That's why they all finna die in the first place. So what you looking back at it for? You miss it? You want to keep doing that right there? Because in that case, you can stay and burn up and get killed with them. Matter of fact, if I see you look back, it's going to sound real country. If I see you look back, I'm going to kill you dead right there. I'm going to kill you dead. I'm going to kill you dead right there, right where you stay. Because what that signifies it to me is where you're supposed to be walking in righteousness, you still missing some of the stuff you did back there. You ain't going places with a testimony. Man, we was over there. The Lord sent a messenger. Boys was living wrong. People was out of line. Even though everybody was had money, they was doing this, they was doing that. It was wrong. God told us to get up out of there, and we got out of there. Now, for a while, we was involved in some stuff, but he gave us some grace. We got out of it. We ain't going back. That's what we're supposed to be doing. But instead, it's going to leave us the country people talking to the law. Hey, man, it be coming up out of me sometime, too. That's why I be saying it. But, yeah, what he's doing with that is, hey, what you looking back for? Look, what you looking back for? You miss it. That's what you want to do. Who got out of lot? He ain't look back. Hey, man, the Lord said don't look back. I'm out of that. That's them. You hearing all kind of screams, people dying, people burning on fire, all that. Like, hey, they ain't got nothing to do <laughs> like we do now. They ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm minding my business. The Lord told me to get up out of there. Ain't got nothing to do with me. Lot's children. Ain't got nothing to do with us neither. We getting up out of here. But who missed it? Who missed it? And what happened? She got killed dead, right? <laughs> she got killed dead. She got turned into salt right then. Boom. I told you, if you look back, signifies that's a life you missed. And if you're looking back at your past like I missed that, then you ain't fit to keep going forward in the Lord. So I'm going to cause you to get turned into a pillar of salt right there. Some of us, he's trying to tell you, I'm trying to save you. You know these laws. You know the statutes. You know the commandments. You know what you're supposed to be doing on certain days. You know you're supposed to be tithing and offering here. You know you're supposed to be on the Sabbath, honoring the Sabbath. You know on certain days that we're supposed to be honoring the feast, we need to honor the feast. He's telling us what to do. He's telling us how to do it. He's telling us what days to do all this type of stuff. And some of y'all have said, all right, we're going to do it. But you're walking it back. Because actually doing this is causing us to change what we used to do. And he's talking about a bunch of y'all looking back. And I'm going to turn a bunch of y'all into some salt. Leave that stuff alone and do what you told me you were going to do. That's exactly how he said it. Do what you told me you were going to do. Now, for God to say that to somebody... He ain't playing with you. Yeah, this is one of those messages. And it's crazy. We got to start out the year with something like this because this is what he said. Usually we, this is going to be a year of blessings and all that. You're just making up all kind of stuff because God don't say that for everybody. But people that just say stuff like that to give people hope, we're looking for the year. The Lord ain't giving me that at all. We starting out with this. You better start doing what you told me you were going to do. But we finna keep going. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Their grace ran out. The day the last righteous person left, that is when your grace ran out. Y'all was testing it. Your grace ran out. The day the last righteous person walked out is the day everybody else died. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Tell them when Jesus comes back, it's going to be the same way, right? And that day he will shall be upon the housetop and his stuff on the in the house. Let him not come down to take it away. See, look. 
That's where Noah was. That's where Lot was. We in a position to where we kind of appear. So, hey, I'm appearing and I'm letting you know, yeah, it's going to get real bad. Might want to get up out of here. So what he's saying is, if you're on top and I'm warning you, don't come down to go back in the house. I need to take this with me. I need to do this here. Now you're trying to bring all the old stuff that was involved in sin with you, which he's not going to permit us to do. Now I'm trying to bring the old life with me. The old stuff that I used to do, I may not just be doing it, but hey, it's memory, and I'm going to take it with me. Some of those stuff I still want to do. I'm going to bring that with me. No, don't get off the roof. Don't go in the house. Don't bring none of that stuff with you. But I'm saying, come on. I mean, come on. It's going to be a lifestyle change. Leave that stuff alone and come with me. Stop doing that stuff you used to do and come with me. You know what it is. Come with me. Right? That's what he's saying. Then at the same time, and he that is in the field, look, the ones that's doing the work, they put their hand on the plow. Let him likewise not return back. Don't take your hand off the plow. You already made a promise. Don't you take your hand off because of whatever. You promised me. Right? Now, this was the toughest line. To me, I was like, oh. So all he had to say, remember Lot's wife. That's the, that's the toughest line. Remember Lot's wife. So I'm like, hey, that could be you. You know what happened to Lot's wife. Like the Lord looking at you. You know what happened to Lot's wife. Remember that. And then he just walk off on you. Something like that. Remember Lot's wife. <laughs> the second shortest verse. This is all he got to say. Look, we might have to start telling people that. Folks getting out of line, and we know they're out of line with the Lord. Hey, remember Lot's wife. <laughs> That's all we got to remember Lot's wife. That's a cold verse. I'm trying to tell you, you made a promise. I'm trying to save you. I'm sending messages, letting you know what's up. Remember Lot wife. That's the next step. It ain't no more steps. The next step is you finna be Lot's wife. The next step is you finna be burned up in Sodom and Gomorrah. The next step is you finna be drowned in this flood. It's the next step. Ain't no more steps. I'm trying to warn some of us. But 33, whoever shall seek to save his life shall lose. Listen to what he's saying. Whoever shall seek to save their life will lose it. You trying to save what you used to do. Like he said, you on top of the house trying to go back in and bring all that stuff with you into what God is telling you to do. And you can't leave it. Because trying to go back in, you finna lose your life. Whoever, whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. Remember, leave all that stuff there. Come do what I'm telling you to do. Come live like I'm telling you to live. That's how you preserve your life. It's just like with the apostles. I got you. Y'all with me. Y'all going to be taken care of. We good. Was it the life they normally live? No. You had business owners. You had folks trying to do all kind of stuff. Now you mean we can't do business on Saturdays no more? Nope. Ain't none of them. Oh, man. But Jesus, I, I made the most money on Saturdays. I, I did this on Saturday. Then, all right. He said, don't do it. They just stop. Don't eat these type of foods no more? Nope. They just stop. They ain't all right. 
So on the feast, I'm supposed to do this right here? Yep. All right, Lord, you said it. And they ain't go without at all. All of them was good. All of them were good. All of them were able to bless people. They were to cast out sickness, cast out demons. They had all kind of stuff. Why? Because they actually did what the Lord was telling them to do. They had power, and they were together doing what the Lord told them to do. That's how they had power to do what the Lord, he gave them the power to do what he was telling them to do. But if we're going to keep making excuses, like he said, you're trying to bring your old life or make excuses, well, I used to be, oh, okay, cool. You, you want to keep looking back. Got you. Let's go to Numbers. We're about to read all Numbers 30. I think it's just 16 verses. Numbers. But yeah. Numbers 30. Got one there. I'm going to wait on a couple more. All right, well, we got those two. I'm about to keep going. Three. Then it says, And Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. Hmm. Hold on, I'm going to stop right there. I don't know if I said this during the message to everybody, but I know I said it to the people in this household before we can get into this. I said this. I may have said it to everybody. I'm not sure. Well, probably about a month ago, I remember telling them this. A wife, the husband gets charged for what the wife does. But the wife doesn't get charged for what a husband does. And when I was asked to explain it, because it just hit me one night, I had never read a scripture saying it. It just hit me. And I'm like, the Lord gave me that. It's like whatever the wife was doing before she got married to her husband, she's going to pay for that herself. Like, I mean, the sins and other decisions she made. She's going to pay for that herself, right? But when she gets with the husband, it says he is the head of the household. Right? So if he's the head, he gets charged for everything that's happening under his leadership. All the decisions he's made in his life, he's going to pay for. All the decisions that happen while he's married and how that marriage goes, he's going to pay for. But what the wife does while they're married, he's going to pay for it. Because you're the head. You should have control of your family. He's going to get charged. So if he's out of line and his wife out of line, it's like a double whammy to him. If he's out of line, his wife out of line, and his kids out of line, it's a triple whammy on him. If the wife is doing some stuff and he letting it go on and it's stuff that she's not supposed to be doing, God is charging him for that. She going to pay too, but he going to pay because he's allowing her to do it. Same thing with the kids. Stuff going on, they're not supposed to be doing. The parents are going to pay. But he going to get it from them too, right? So he getting his stuff, his wife's stuff, and the kids' stuff. The wife doesn't have to pay for what the husband does. Because she's supposed to submit to her husband as to the Lord. So he's supposed to be leading in a godly way, right? So he pays for everybody, but she doesn't pay 
for him. I remember telling them that. I don't know if I said that to everybody, but I know I told them that. And I'm like, that's crazy. That's how much responsibility is on a man. You letting her do some stuff? Like you said, so the husband takes the blame just as Christ did. Exactly. That's in conjunction with loving his wife as Christ loved the church, gave his life for it. Exactly. In this marriage, you the head. So if stuff going on and you don't check it, it's going on you. She out of line and you don't say nothing, it's going on you. Your kids out of line, you don't say it, it's going on you. Everything falls on the head. And what's crazy is he gave me this, this morning, to confirm what I had told them about a month ago. And I don't know if I said it to everybody, but I know I told them a month ago. Now watch what we get into right here. And Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, this is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. Listen to what he just said. When you made a vow to the Lord, When you made a vow to the Lord, you bound your soul. You better do everything you said you was finna do. Everything. That's what he, every word that proceeded out of your mouth, you better do. Somebody said there are a lot of passion men that let their wives do whatever. Exactly. And they're going to pay for it. But you're going to see on here. So now I was like, man, every word that come out of your mouth, you bound your soul. Every word, what you, Lord, if you do this, I'm going to change. I'm going to do this. All right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do everything you just said. I'm holding you to it. If you don't, finna see what happens a little bit later. All right. If a woman also vow a vow unto the Lord and bind herself by a bond being in her father's house, what we be talking about over here, y'all? <laughs> they already know. Over here, we be talking about this. How we raising our children is not right. Our daughters, it's crazy. Our daughters are supposed to stay with us, men. They're supposed to stay with us until they get married. We're charged with taking care of them and making sure they do what they're supposed to do until they get married. I know this ain't going to be popular opinion, but we're reading it. Because right now, like it's telling you, women, it tell you they're the weaker vessel. Dudes play mind games and be all kind of stuff, right? So if you're the father, you're not going to let another dude come run a mind game on your daughter. You know us. You know what we do. You, go, you are in charge of upholding your daughters in righteousness, right? If she's under, she's supposed to be under your roof. Until you get her okay, yeah, that dude you got, that's him. That's what's up. He's a good person. He is. And once she's married, now she leaves your house. Her husband becomes her head, right? Until then, as the father you are her head. So you get charged when she do all this other type of stuff, right? When she leave your house in marriage to this dude, now he gets charged with whatever she does. It's off your hands now, right? So now what it's telling you, while the daughter is in your house and she's swearing an oath to the Lord or a vow, right? This is how it goes. If a woman also vow, vow unto the Lord, and bind herself by a bond, being in her father's house in her youth, and her father hear her vow, and her bond wherewith she had bound her soul, and her father shall hold his peace at her, then all her vows shall stand. 
And if every bond wherewith she has bound her soul shall stand. So when she in your house, anything she said that she going to do for the Lord, that she swore to the Lord, that she going to do, God, I'm going to be this type of woman. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Anything that she said in your house, you heard it, and you don't say nothing to her, all that stand. She got to live by that. All of that stand. But look at the power you have, Father, men. It's also going to tell us if she's saying some stuff that's out of line and swearing it, you are the one that had the power. You ain't doing none of that. And God go honor what you said. Five. But if her father disallow her in the day that he heareth not only any of her vows of her bonds wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand, and the Lord shall forgive her because her father disallowed her. Look at that. So she done says some stuff out of line. And you, uh-uh, you ain't doing none of that. You don't get charged because it's according to you supposed to be a godly father, right? So if you uphold the law, statutes, and commandments of God, and your daughter then says something that you know she can't uphold or that you know she can't do or that don't line up with the word of God, you, oh, no, 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 we ain't doing none of that. The Lord will forgive her. <clears throat> Look at that. The Lord will forgive her for making those vows. And you don't get charged. That's the power you have as a father. Men, we have that type of power in the community. God will honor you and what you saying. He said, it really makes sense now why the world, i.e. government, wanted the father, black father out of the house and wanted mothers to raise kids by themselves. Because it, yeah, it's finna get into all of this. If a woman vowed and she don't have a husband, it's finna get into all of this. So now, if your daughter finna be out of line, you the one got the power to, oh, no, we ain't doing that. God gonna listen to you. You're right. He gonna forgive your daughter, and he gonna listen to you. And if she had a husband, see, look, she's supposed to go from the father's house to the husband's. She ain't supposed to be out here by herself. When we putting our daughters out, it's like we sitting in the lamb amongst the wolves, and it tell you this is the weaker lamb. This is the weaker vessel. That's why we support. Anyway, look. And if she had at, at all a husband when she vowed or uttered aught out of her lips, where was she bound her soul, and her husband heard it, and held his peace at her in the day that he heard it, then her vow shall stand, and her bonds wherewith bound her soul shall stand. Boom. So if her, she made some vows to the Lord while she was married, the husband know that stands. So now if she don't honor those vows, the husband pay and she pay. See there? The husband has the authority to accept or revoke what she's saying because he is the authority in the home. That's why he's paying for all this stuff. So while we're going into all of this, we're really saying, wives, some of y'all are putting stuff on your husbands that shouldn't be on them. Some of y'all are stacking sin on top of his sin. Some of y'all are putting him in positions that's going to mess him up and not even knowing it. If you said you was going to do something for the Lord and you're not doing it, all of that is counting against him as well. He was showing us this for a reason. Like he just said, man, if you done vowed something, you better do everything you said out of your mouth. If your daughter vowed something and she there, and she ain't doing, it's going on you. Same thing with your wife. It's going on you. I told him this, and I didn't even know this was in here to this morning. It's going on you. Do 
what you told me you were going to do is what he's saying to somebody in here this morning. Do what you told me you were going to do. I'm about to put even the sons ought to stay home until they choose a wife and the father ensures the home the son builds is sufficient. I don't blame. Boom. Well, really, we get into that. That's a whole nother thing. The sons are different. They ain't supposed to just be in the house. But, yeah, sons are different. But it says, uh, so she stand. Eight. But if her husband disallowed her on the day he heard it, then he shall make her vow which she vowed and that which she uttered with her lips wherewith she bound her soul of none effect and the Lord shall forgive her. So if she make a vow and the husband, no, nah, we ain't doing none of that. Then ain't nothing charged on him. We're not doing that. That ain't what we do. And the Lord will forgive her for even making the vow. Right? Once again, Husbands, you are the head. You determine what goes on in your home. So if stuff going on that ain't supposed to be, if vows ain't getting kept, and people making promises and they're not keeping them, that's for the title. Promises aren't made to be broken. How they promises are made to be broken? No, they're not. You're supposed to keep them. So somebody breaking promises they made to God is going on you. Men, if you're a father or you're a husband. Hmm. But every vow of a widow and of, and of her that is divorced, where would they have bound their souls shall stand against her. So, hey, your husband dead or you divorced, you make some vows, that's on you. And if she vowed in her husband's house or bound her soul by a bond with an oath and her husband heard it and held his peace at her and disallowed her not, then all her vows shall stand and every bond wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. So now that's, hey, you made these vows while you were married. Now you divorce. You still got to uphold what you said while you were married to the Lord. That's that. Mm -hmm. 11. And her husband heard it. Peace with her, this vow or not. Then all the vows shall stand, and every bond with her bound, her soul shall stand. Okay, yeah, we got that. 12. But if her husband hath utterly made them void on the day he heard them, then whatsoever proceeded out of her lips concerning her vows or concerning the bond of her soul shall not stand. Her husband has made them void, and the Lord shall forgive her. So she made some vows to the Lord, and y'all getting divorced. If the husband don't say nothing, you still got to uphold all that stuff in your divorce. But if he, you know what? All that stuff you're supposed to be doing, you ain't got to do no more. He tell you that? You forgiven, stuff ain't going to be just held against you like that. But when you by yourself, you sit it, it's going to go against you. But if you ain't just honoring some of those vows, God ain't just going to hold it against you. You're still supposed to live the way the Lord telling you to live, right? 13, every vow and every binding oath to afflict the soul. Her husband may establish it or her husband may make it void. But if her husband altogether hold his peace at her from day to day, then she establishes all her vows or all her bonds which are upon her. He can confirm at them because he held his peace at her in the day that he heard them. But if he shall in any ways make them void after that he heard them, then he shall bear her iniquity. What this is saying is, look, husbands, when your wife if she come to you, I want to do this for the Lord. I told God I'm going to do this for him, and I told him I'm going to live like this, and I told him I'm going to do that. If you hear it, and you, oh, all right, you just confirmed her vows. She held to that. If she don't do what she says she's going to do, you getting charged, she getting charged, right? 
But it says that she tell you I'm doing this and I'm doing that and you No. No, you ain't doing that. All right. He'll take it back from her. You good. But he also said if she tell you, look, this is for certain type of dudes right here. I know why they put this in. If she tell you she doing this and she doing that, and you don't say nothing, you just don't say nothing at all. When you don't say nothing, you confirm it. That's what she's supposed to do. And then it says, so now if you can, you ain't said nothing, she started doing these things, you ain't saying nothing, then all of a sudden later you try to, well, you know what? No, we, you ain't, you know, those, those vows, you don't have to live by that. You ain't got to do that no more. Now it says you, every time she don't live by that vow, you finna pay. If you ain't say nothing to begin with, don't say nothing now. That's what they're saying. You're going to bear iniquities because you confirmed it by not saying nothing. She started walking the vows out somewhere. She got to not honoring. Them. And now you're going to come. Well, yeah, you all right. You ain't got to do that. Oh, you finna pay. Every time she don't honor that vow, you finna pay. 16. These are the statutes which the Lord commanded Moses between a man and his wife, between the father and his daughter, being yet in her youth in her father's house. We got to start doing what we told the Lord we was going to do. He's saying it for a reason. Some of us as men, we getting charged with stuff. They doing vile, they... I'm going to live like this for the Lord. I'm going to do this. And we, all right, yeah. And then they ain't doing it. Or they walking back. Or they doing this. And stuff coming on us that shouldn't be. And we got stuff that we said we was going to do. And we not doing. And God holding all that against us. That's why I'm like, I never even knew that was in here. Until this morning when he gave me those scriptures. Acts 2. 38 through 44. Acts 2, 38 through 44. This is our second to last scripture. All right, we got two there. So I'm going to wait on one more. All right, now we got a bunch of there. Good. 38 through 44. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many others, uh, many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Save yourself from this crooked generation we had. Then that they gladly received his word, were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. He gave them a real word. 3,000 souls were saved, right? Then this is what the Lord was pointing out. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship 
and in breaking of bread and in prayers. So those people, they didn't just say this because they were all there. They got saved and then they went back to doing all the old stuff they were doing. Everything that they were taught, those people stayed together and they all did together. I've been telling us that since day one. We all have to be on the same page doing these things together. When we separate ourselves, it's when the enemy can pick us off. It's when we fall back into doing stuff we shouldn't be doing. What it tells you, they all were together, stayed together, and kept doing exactly what they were taught by the apostles, right? And it says they fellowshiped together. They broke bread together. They prayed together. It says all of that in 42, right? And fear came upon every soul. That's wonders. Wonder came on every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed, what does it say? Were together and had all things in common. They all believed the same thing. They all started living the same way, and they all had the same goal, doing the same stuff, moving toward the same life that God had promised them. They didn't change up. They didn't switch. It wasn't some saying one minute, I'm going to do this, and then turning around and doing something else later. They all were on the same page. And when they were all on the same page, you saw what it said. Many wonders were done with them. They all had to be together. A lot of churches today don't have any power anymore because they all aren't on the same page. We get in here, we give lip service to the Lord and all that cool. Once we get out of here, ain't none of us living like what we just read or saw or what we know to do. We get in here, I don't mess with them folks over there. They don't really mess with me. I'm living partly by some of this stuff. They living by a whole nother part. But ain't none of us doing what we're supposed to do. How's the Lord going to work power there? How's he going to come in and have miracles and wonders going on? How's the church going to have the power it's supposed to have when people ain't living how they're supposed to live in the community? Lip service. The Lord don't like that. Don't like that. Hmm. So now that we got that, we're going to hit the last one right here, right? And Prophetess Morgan, I'm going to need you to call in and get ready to pray us out. Please, he asked these, though. Five. We're going to read one through seven. These ask these five, one through seven. You put 17 on there. It's one through seven, not 17. <laughs> Let me know where y'all at. I think I have one. All right, we got the theirs. Here we go. Here we go. It says, keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. That means, hey, guard how you stepping when you go in the house of the Lord. Remember, it says, a righteous man, his steps are ordered by the Lord. Now, it's talking about keep your foot. When you go in there, you better come in correct when you go in the house of the Lord, right? You better step in correct. And be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. For they consider not that they do evil. Hey, and when you get in there, be more ready to listen. You got some people coming in 
I got to offer this sacrifice before the Lord. All them people that got to keep sacrificing all the time, like he said, hey, remember, every time you messed up, you were supposed to sacrifice something to the Lord. Like he said, you're offering a sacrifice of fools. Y'all keep going out here doing stuff over and over where you got to keep coming in and sacrificing. That's a sacrifice of fools. If you actually hear, you'll start living different. And you won't have to be sacrificing like this, right? That's what he's saying. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon the earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. When you get in the house of the Lord, you need to be listening more than anything. Second of all, don't you be quick to say stuff to God. Because he in heaven, you on earth. Why is he going to say don't be quick to say something to God? Because if you look right now, the church is driven off of emotion. How can I help drive emotion? We got the organ dude over there playing. Because people tell you the organ is church, huh? All right, well, anyway, we got the organ playing. They got the keyboard playing. They got the drummer drumming. You got these slow songs playing. You know, people singing these emotional songs. They got all kind of words that's hitting on the, your state of life right now. You could be down and out. Are you thinking about, oh, man, they used to beat me. You crying. You saying all kind of stuff, and they just driving it. And a lot of pastors, they thrive on that because that's when they can get you to say stuff and do stuff that you normally wouldn't do if all that emotion wasn't in there. That's why music is powerful. These songs be on, people get to crying, and oh, they doing all kind of stuff. And the Lord, I mean, not the Lord, the pastor can sit there and come over there, yeah, that's right, that's right. And God telling me right now that if you was to donate this much money, or if you was to do this, he can get you out that situation. You, you pull that wallet out. And you doing stuff. And if God say, if you do this for him right now, and if you do this, and you just going to say it, right? You're saying stuff real quick. He's telling you, don't be quick to say something to God. You see it right here. Don't be quick to do it. Don't let that order out your lips. Don't be hasty. Watch what you're saying in the house of God to God. Then he tell you, let your words be few. Stop talking so much. But we see why he's saying stop talking so much, right? Three, for a dream coming through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. He talking about when he give you dreams, or if you have dreams, and he's sitting there like, yeah, you can go off into that. If he okay your dreams, or he give you a dream to do, it's going to be work to come with it. What did he just say? I don't like people that do a lot of talk. It's going to be work that comes with it. Are you going to be able to tell somebody executing the dream that God gave them or executing the dream of their own that God is okay? In? It's going to be tasks and work that go along with it. You can't be a business owner just talking. You have to do some footwork. You're going to be doing some stuff. They ain't going to be doing too much talking, right? But how you know some of this stuff is of God is because when he's telling you to do it, he ain't going to tell you to do nothing that's going to break his own laws, statutes, and commandments. He ain't going to have you go do something. And then if he's sitting there saying, hey, honor the Sabbath, you ain't supposed to be working, none of that type of stuff. Answering emails, taking work calls, doing no, no. What we'll do, well, this is the job that God gave me. Well, that job is telling you to violate a law, statute, and commandment that the Lord has said, I don't know how many times in this Bible and the other stuff that we read. Honor this. So obviously, this ain't coming from the Lord. Because he ain't finna tell you to break my law. That don't even make sense. That means that's of us. We do that. 
he got you doing certain stuff, he ain't going to have you break none of his laws on the Day of Atonement. I know I'm supposed to be atoning, but I got this going on. I got to be here, and I got to be, and that's a part of the dream, and this is the part of the legacy that God, no, it's not. That's a part of you. You doing that on your own. Now, I could have gave you this business, but while I'm giving you this business, you don't put the business over my laws and statutes. You're supposed to still execute this, and you do this. Your dream don't come before God. Your dream don't come before my commandments. The dream I gave you don't even break my commandments, right? That don't happen. So that's how we know this stuff is of God. If we still can uphold our commitment and our commandments and our way of life that God is telling us to live and still do this stuff, then that comes from the Lord. If you can't, or they, hey, you got to work this day and we're going to have to let you go. That wasn't from the Lord in the first place. Right? But even with all of that, you're doing work, you ain't going to be talking too much. Somebody that talks a whole lot, always got something to say, but really don't know nothing, that's always in everybody's business. A fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. Hmm. When thou vowest a vow unto God, Defer not to pay it. Hey, you better pay it. For he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is it that thou shouldn't, shouldest not vow than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. It's better you don't even make the vow than to make one and then turn around and don't do it. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Look at that. Every time you tell God, I'm finna do this, or you make a promise to God and you don't do it, he says you are sinning. You are causing yourself to sin by telling God you're gonna do something and then don't do it or walk it back. If you're married, you're getting your husband charged with that. If you're not married, you're getting yourself charged with that. If you're a man and you ain't married or married, it really don't matter. You're getting yourself charged with that. Kids is getting charged to your parents, all of this. But he said you causing yourself to sin. I already got a way of life I told you to walk. When you ain't doing that, you're sinning. Now you, all right, Lord, I'm going to walk this walk. And then you don't, you sin. You told me you was finna do this. You told me you was finna tithe correctly. Now you walking it back. You sin it. I'm holding you to it. You told me you're gonna start honoring the Sabbath. Now you walking it back. You sin it. You told me you was finna start honoring these feasts. Now you walking it back. You sin it. Some people be, Lord, I'm gonna start going to church and I'm gonna do this. You told me that. Now you're walking it back. You sin it. You told me you was going to stop doing whatever. You sin it. You told me you was going to leave this dude alone. You sin That's what he, you, your mouth is causing you to be held in sin. Everything you're telling me, I'm holding you to. And when you're getting caused to sin before the Lord, we're going to get to the rest of that. Neither shall thou before the angel that it was an error. So you can't, well, I messed up when I said that, Lord. <laughs> I messed up when I said that. Oh, no. I'm holding you to all that. You ain't getting out of it. Wherefore should God, <laughs> wherefore should God be angry at thy voice? He'll get mad at you just talking. And destroy the work of their hands. You're going to have God get mad and destroy everything you done built. Destroy your life, destroy what you got going on, maybe even destroy you because of what you telling him you're going to do and you ain't doing it. Because of what you saying with your mouth and thinking he ain't holding you to it. God, no, I ain't mean that. <laughs> okay, yeah. He letting us know this morning, I ain't playing with y'all, but y'all think I'm playing. 
I'm sending this warning because the art gate about to close. Finna start flooding on some of y'all. Hey, a lot of them done already, they hitting the hill. They're firing brimstone getting ready to come down on a couple of y'all. He's saying his grace is done with some of us. We right there. We better start doing what we told him we're going to do. Seven, for in the multitude of dreams and many words, there are also diverse vanities. But fear thou God. And a bunch of these dreams y'all going, you're doing it for some stuff that really don't even matter to the Lord. Cool. He ain't worried about that. But you better make sure you honor God the way he's supposed to be honored and you do what you told him you was going to do at some point in time. What he showed me a while ago was that some of y'all have been telling God stuff or in services, oh, I'm going to do this, Lord, I'm going to do that because y'all been getting blessed, or oh, this has been happening, I'm going to do this, or oh, yeah, God, I'm going to start walking in your ways and in your will and all this, and a bunch of y'all have been walking that back and ain't been living it out. And he said, he's holding it like you lied to me. When he showed me that, you lied to me. I'm holding you to it, and you just straight up bald face lied to me and my patience is running out. So whoever this is for, which is for some people in this ministry, he's already showed me some folks that I need to talk to. So some of y'all are going to start getting calls. I need to come by, whatever. It really don't matter. Please. Do whatever you told God you was going to do and stand on it because he's holding you accountable. This ministry, we're going to do what we say we're going to do. We're teaching this unadulterated true word of God. I don't care who like it, who don't. If folks sitting there, I don't want to be there no more because they're talking about this and they're saying, hey, that's it. We got to do what the Lord telling us to do. He gave us this vision. We got to do it. Some people might not want to be a part no more. Cool. I can't hold that against nobody. Because that ain't for me to do. We got to keep moving forward. We may have some people want to come join. Hey, they really standing on it. Yeah, you may want to join until you really see it's real over here. You know what I'm saying? It don't be like them people. Well, Lord, uh, I did, but yeah, let me go bury my dead father. Or let me go tell my folks, you know, I'm about, no, you ain't got to do all that. If you're going in, go in. And let's go hard. Let's move. Let's continue to do what he's telling us to do. But we ain't playing about this word over here. We standing on that. Amen. So with all that being said, that is the word for this Sabbath. We're going to go to end it with prayer. Yeah, let me be quiet. Let me be quiet. Miss Morgan, if you could go ahead and pray us out. <sighs> Before I begin, I just want to apologize because I've been hearing so much uh, during this word. The Holy Spirit is just <sighs> downloading so much to me right now. I just want to reiterate the severity of this word. This is the last warning. This is it for the people, certain people. This is this is your last opportunity and that's that on that. That's that on that. So, Father God, oh, man. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Father God, we thank you for this word of warning. What a blessing it is to hear from you directly. As Minister Walter says, even a warning is a blessing. So we thank you. We thank you for your man of God. We thank you for his boldness, his conviction to stand before us this day, to give us exactly what you gave him. Father, let us use this day 
Help us to use this day to truly atone for the sins, not only sins that we may have committed this week, but lifestyles that we are caught in, things that have become routine for us that are not godly. Let us use this day to atone, to turn away from, to repent, true repentance from our heart. Sincerity, a heart of sincerity. Well, we are looking to turn away from these things, things that are distractions, things that we are saying are blessings, things we are saying are things that are of you and from you that are keeping us from doing what we're called. Father, you are not a man that you shall lie. And you are not like man where you contradict yourself. So any dream, any business, any thing you placed on our heart to do, it will align with us living holy and righteous. It will not be something that will become a distraction. It will not be something that takes us away from you. It will not be something that veers us off the course with the foundation and the building blocks that you've given us for this ministry. I pray, Father, that we would all take this day, this warning, to do self-evaluation, to ensure that we are on the right path, to ensure that we are in the right industries, to ensure that that business that we feel you're birthing in our bellies aligns with you. And it's not just something that we want to do, God. Help us to understand that there's a certain amount of grace that you've given us. We don't know when that will run out. We thank you for yet another warning, God. You told me this is the second one. Mm. I keep hearing compromise. I keep hearing that word. We're compromising people of God. Help us to understand that each day you bless us to see is just that a blessing. It is not a requirement for you to continue to protect us, to watch over us, to provide for us when we are not doing your will. You let us know, Father God, what it is that we're supposed to do because we are yours, God. You've called for us to honor the Sabbath and there is a way to do it. And if we are not doing it, exactly the way you told us, that's not good enough. No more compromising on the Sabbath, people of God. Hey God, I feel you. No more compromising. No more compromising with our tithing and our offering. Hey God, I feel you. Thank you now. Mm. There are no excuses. You do not receive any excuses as to why we are not tithing, as to why we are not giving you back a tenth of what you gave us, God. It's yours to begin with, God. People of God, please do not continue to play with God as it relates to what he's instructing us to do. He has let us know this is the absolute final warning. Help us to understand, God, that you love us enough to let us know when we're off course, that you love us enough to let us know when we're compromising. Because you want to see us all be with you, God, back in our rightful place, with our garments, with our crowns. Without obedience, it is impossible to please God. Help us today. Help us today, God, to get back with you, to get back right on the right path, to atone for those things. It doesn't matter what we've done. We just need to acknowledge in this hour that we've done it so that we can get right. He loves us enough men and women of God that he will allow us to get back on the right path. But if we let this sun go down today without atoning for the things we know we've done, that is it. No more warnings. Father, I love you and I thank you for everything that you are doing by us and through us. And it's in all these things that I ask in your son, Yeshua's mighty name, by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.
true believer, man. If if you at home and you watching this, God is giving you a warning too. Just like he's warning us. He's giving us all warnings. This is evidence of his love that he's watching us and that he's with us because he could have just, you know what? And in the blink of an eye, we up out of here. Or you know what? And in the blink of an eye, our whole way of life come down. You know what? And then we lose everything we built. But for him to take out the time while I got one eye open and can barely see anything and say what he said to me and the tone that he said it to me, it's like a father or a parent that's tired of dealing with hard-headed children. You know what the rules are. You see them. Y'all read them. Yet you choose to keep not doing them. Well, I'm about to get out my belt. And when I pull it out, it ain't no, no more speaking. I'm trying to give you a chance before I snatch you up by one hand and get the whooping. He's trying to give us a chance, y'all. He's warning us. Now, he's telling me, I gave you all that building. For a reason. We got it for a reason. But I don't care who it is. They know what we, what's been taught. They know what I've said. They know what I've gone over. If they just going to continue to not do it, building to be there. But it may not be that many people in it. And it's going to be various reasons why it's not. I told y'all I seen that. I done said it two, three weeks in a row. I saw it and it was not good. You see from this word what he on, and he is not playing. If we take heed to this one, this would be a very good year for a whole bunch of us. But if we're going to continue to just take what's God's and kind of put it on the back burner or do other stuff with what we supposed to be giving to God or not honor him how he say he's supposed to be honored. The art gate about to close. So with all that being said, this Sabbath, man, make sure you spend some time with the Lord. Just as the woman of God prayed, make sure you atone. Do some atoning today. If you know where you done fell short or where you told the Lord something and you done backed up on it or stepped back or walked back or you know you ain't been doing what you supposed hey, today you need to talk to him. And let him speak to you. Do some talking, but actually open up your ears so you can hear as well. But until then, please stay safe. Until then, try to get right with the Lord so you stay in his hand and behind his hedge of protection. We're going to see y'all for the bid on Wednesday. Enjoy the rest of your set. I love y'all. I want to see us all win. And the Lord is actually trying to help us get there. It's a stern way, but he don't care. If we do what he's telling us to do, we'll all be with garments and crowns in the end. We'll all have things that we've been placed over, and we'll all achieve our goal. That's what I want for us. That's what this ministry is about, to get as many people there as we can. But I love y'all. See y'all Wednesday for the bid. Uh -huh.